we are going to be recording tonight's meeting so that if you have any uh, friends who missed the meeting and who would like to view it, this will be uploaded to our project page and you can view it later. Um, we will also be uploading a survey to the project page as well. And we hope that you will participate in that. Um, if we could go on to the next slide, please. So here are some Zoom tips. During the first part of the presentation tonight, we are going to be listening to the design team's presentation on the observations that they've made about the site. And then once we get to the second half of the presentation, we are going to open it up and listen to the thoughts and ideas that you guys have. We're really curious about what your experiences are on the site. Uh, the stories that you have, the suggestions that you have for how we can improve the site during this project. Um, so at that point, we're going to ask you to raise your hand and then our team will unmute you and you can either say your question or you can put it in the chat. During the presentation, we ask if you have any questions, you can put those in the chat. Um, if it's just a, an essential piece of information, one of us can try responding um, during the Present, uh, during the Q&A section, um, I can read off questions. If you're not comfortable raising your hand and speaking, that's totally fine. Um, so if we go on to the next slide. Tonight's agenda, we're going to do the project team introduction and then discuss a little bit of the project sort of technical aspects, the overview. We're gonna go through the presentation of the site. Um, then we're gonna have listening and discussion and then we're going to go through closing remarks and next steps, sort of showing you what the, um, the process is going to be sort of going forward. Um, so I just want to repeat for anyone who has joined us in the last few minutes, um, we have Spanish language interpretation available. Um, lower right hand corner of your screen, there's the interpretation button and you can join the Spanish interpretation room. So let's go on to the next slide. So project team, I am B. Chatfield. I am the project manager for the Parks and Recreation Department. Please contact me if you have any questions or ideas or thoughts or responses. There is my email address right there, abigail.chatfield. I never go by Abigail, but that's my email. Um, and that's my phone number. That is my direct cell phone, right? So you, you call that, I answer. Um, we have Christine Brandeo, who is our outreach coordinator. That's her email address. And then we have our fantastic design team who is here tonight. We've got Jade Cummings, Kellyanne Connolly, and we also have Kelly Ashton, who is here as well from Terra Inc. They're a fantastic design firm. They've done a lot of work with Parks Department and we are thrilled to have them join us on this project. Um, we are also working with Tiffany Caballero from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and she has been fantastic in helping us get the word out about this project. So if we can go on to the next slide. So we have our project overview. Here we are in January, 2022 at community meeting one. Um, the first community meeting is where we talk to everybody and try and figure out what are the things that people really wanna see addressed in the park renovation. Uh, community meeting two, we anticipate will be held in March. And at that point, we come back to you with three rough ideas, three sort of, they're not choices, but we're trying to figure out from what we hear from this meeting, we try and put it into three different plans. And we bring those to you and we say, what does everybody like from each plan? And from that feedback that we get, um, we develop our final plan which we then share at community meeting three. We're anticipating that's gonna be in May. Um, and that meeting is really sort of asking everybody, um, did we get it right? You know, are there any other things that we need to include here? Um, has everybody been, have they, have they shared their opinions and thoughts and um, are we going in the right direction? And if the answer is yes, then we proceed into um, doing permitting and construction documents we would start construction for this park in spring of 2023. And right now we have a budget of 1.5 million, 1.56, which is a good, reasonably healthy budget for the size of this park. 
Um, and that means that we would be opening in summer of 2023. So if we could go on to the next slide. So here we are, this is our Venn diagram of you know, the whole park process, park redesign process. It's really a balancing act. Um, and we have the city of Boston priorities that we balance with community input and the parks and recreation goals that our department has. And then all of that, you know, we look at through the lens of safety guidelines and regulatory, what's allowed, what's legal, what's not. <laughs> we always want to do what's legal. Um, and then we ask the designers to gather all that together and design us a park. So some of the priorities that I'm referring to, if you go on to the next slide, city of Boston priorities. We have expanding walkable access to parks, addressing equity, which means if you have a community that doesn't have access to a recently renovated park, we are trying to focus on those parks and try and provide recent renovations. Climate resilience. Everybody knows that the climate is changing and we have lots of needs that people have. They're trying, they're using our parks now sort of as living rooms more and more. We're having children's birthday parties. Um, you know, so how do we create new parks that will allow people to use them in our changing climate and cultural situations such as COVID. Um, community health, trying to provide spaces for people to meet their neighbors and recreate, um, and housing and community building. So we go on to the next slide. So those are the city priorities. Now we have the parks priorities, very similar, but um, we want to preserve and protect our existing trees, specifically at Flaherty, we have a wonderful tree canopy. So we're really thrilled about that. That's a really fantastic thing to start off with. We want to expand usable park areas, improve universal access. So we're, we're certainly interested in expanding accessibility at Flaherty. Um, enhance park visibility, improve access to parks. And we want to design flexible and multifunctional park spaces. Next slide, please. So at this point, I am gonna hand off the presentation to our design team and they're gonna walk you through the research that they've done, the ideas that they've had. And once they're finished, we're gonna all come back together and have a discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bea. Uh, good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Jade Cummings and I'm here with my colleagues, Kelly Connolly and Kelly Ashton. We are landscape architects um, and we're, we're really excited uh, to have the opportunity to work with all of you on this project. Just to reiterate what B said earlier, this meeting process is super important to us. Uh, in particular, the meeting tonight, uh, I really encourage anyone to share comments, questions, concerns. We see, a, I see a lot of children out there tonight, which is fantastic. I wanna just say thank you to all the kiddos out there for taking your time. You could be watching a movie, I know, and you're here. So thank you for, um, for joining us. We really wanna hear what you have to say because first and foremost, this park is your park. This is your community. This is where you live. This is where you play. This is where you're growing up. This is where you meet with your friends and your family. So we really understand how important this place is to you. Uh, so we're, the purpose of tonight is to really, really listen to what you have to say. Uh, so as B mentioned, we're not presenting any design ideas tonight because there's no way we could start to design a really a park for you without first hearing what you want. So I'll go through a little bit of the history of the park, which is just really fast. I think it's always fascinating to see, learn a little more about your community. And then we're going to break down the site into what we've observed um, coming into your community and really looking at the surroundings. We'll look at your your regional neighborhood, um, then we'll, we'll break it down into the site. And again, we're gonna talk about what we observed, but we really are going to rely on you to tell us what you know about this place, okay? So starting with the history, really just fascinating um, and, and feel good to know that so early on in the process, uh, Boston was aware of the need for park space for children. Um, in 1914, as you can see here, uh, there was a house and laundry building uh, on the corner of Cornwall Street and Brookside Avenue. There was a fire at one point, so that burned down 
Uh, and then in 1917, again, the, the, the leaders of the community were observing how the children needed a place to go. So they started the Cornwall Street Playground and they would go out and they would have evening sing-alongs, um, they would play baseball, they would, uh, they would just gather. And it was just, it was like a, a refreshing place for the, the community to go. And the reason I'm mentioning that right now is as we begin talking about how you see this place evolving, um, I think having a, a sense of the history, like there was a, there was a performance element um, and just the way the community came together in this place was quite meaningful. Uh, and then in, we fast forward to 1970, the Cornwall Street Playground then became the Brookside Avenue Playground. Um, again, everyone was aware of the need to um, uh, up the ante, if you will, to really provide a space for these kids. And at this time, they were proposing a swimming pool, a skating rink, a basketball court, and a playground. Um, now, granted, not all of these elements uh, ended up coming to, um, to be on the site, but I think this this image is a really good example of why it's important to dream the dream right now, to think about what it is that all of you would identify as successful or unsuccessful or as in need so that we can work together with B and her team um, to deliver the most we can for your park. And then finally in 1992 through 1994, uh, the park was developed into what it is today, the William F. Flaherty Playground Park. The next few slides, I will just, I uh, will go through these relatively quickly. We just thought they were interesting images. Again, who would have thought that this was Jamaica Plain not too long ago? Uh, and Flaherty Park is generally in this area with Franklin Park along the south side here and Jamaica Pond you can see in the back. Continuing to 1914, this was an interesting map because this is where we learned through our research that there was an, a laundry facility on the corner of the park here and again, there was a fire at one point, so that obviously no longer exists. In 1922, you can see how the roadways are starting to develop. Um, we have Franklin Park in the lower right corner. And then in 1977, well, this was a blurry uh, aerial map. We thought it was interesting because there was, at one point, there were two basketball courts on the site in that open area where there is a star in the pavement. In, 1990, in 1990, um, generally starting to take form um, as the park that it is today. And as we look at the current uh, aerial photography, uh, this is where we are. Uh, B mentioned the Im impressive existing tree canopy that is around the site, which we always, uh, we always love to see it with any new project. Um, shade and just coverage and that feeling of enclosure that you really get when you go to the site is really important. And we noted on site, you have uh, some significant elements. You have um, a plaque um, just commemorating the Flaherty Playground Park. And then there is a, this interesting, when we were out there, this interesting piece of, it was, it's a seating element obviously, and we did a little research and it is a granite, it was a public art piece um, entitled Rooted. Uh, it was created by a local artist in your community. Her name was Kristen McVeigh, and it was funded by the Edward Ingersoll Brown Fund, and that was in 1993. And the reason this is important, it's important because we need the community to understand that as we are redeveloping your park, an element like this actually has historic significance. So this is the type of element that we will need to hear very clearly from you. Is this very important to your community? Is this, you know, on a, on a, on a spectrum? So again, as B mentioned, we have a survey at the end of the project tonight. Um, you can fill it out at your leisure, there's no hurry. Um, but if there are any thoughts regarding any of the elements inside your park, we will be um, very grateful to receive your insight. And then finally, um, as most of you are probably aware, uh, the entrance off of Cornwall Street, we have the plaque that has been embedded in the stone to William Flaherty. So jumping in, as I mentioned, to the site analysis, uh, we first, as I mentioned, wanted to look at the region, get a sense of what is this place? Um, admittedly, I do not live in Jamaica Plain. I lived nearby for three years. 
This is where we would go for dinner because we all know you have some of the best restaurants in the area. Um, but it was, again, fascinating to get more of a sense of your neighborhood context. And this diagram that we're looking at, this orange asterisk, this star right here, this is your park. And what these orange circles are showing us is if you, if neighbors within the area wanted, are willing to walk a quarter of a mile, this is roughly the vicinity within which they live. And if people are willing to walk half a mile to the park, this is generally the vicinity within which that community exists. Uh, we also noted this is the Southwest Corridor Bikeway in proximity to your park. Uh, just for reference, this is Amory Street. Many of you may know that. And then uh, of course we have Franklin Park down in the lower right in the corner here. And then as a landscape architect, it's our job to also have a sense of what your local zoning is. And that means what uses are allowed to be built in your neighborhood? Can you have houses? Can you have warehouses? Can you have factories? Can you have stores? And what this diagram shows us, all of the areas that are in this light yellow color, this is where all of your houses are. This is where your neighbors are. These are your residences. And then this light blue color throughout, this is actually where you'll have more of um, more type in industrial type work and businesses. As we start to get a little closer to the park, this green shape right here is the Fl William Flaherty Playground Park. Here we have Cornwall Street. Here we have Brookside Avenue. And then these orange triangles show us where the primary entries entrances are into the park here in this location, in this location. Uh, the Brookside Community Health Center, which many of you are probably aware of, is right here. And then as you can see, again, um, we're in a very um, heavy residential district, which again is why we're so happy to see so many of you on this call tonight. Um, I'm hoping that many of you live in this, in this area. So as we really start to get into the site, I know a lot of you might be looking at this slide thinking, look at all those squiggly lines and there are a lot of shapes and I'm in second grade and I can do that. And you probably can. And someday come on over and maybe we'll hire you to help us do this. Um, but what this diagram is, is it's, it's talking about the circulation throughout the park. And some of you might say, what circulation? Well, circulation is where do the cars drive? Where do the people walk? And the reason that is important to somebody like me, who's a landscape architect, is we need to know how to keep you safe in this park. So we need to understand where the roadways are. So if you look at these big dashed lines, these are the roadways. So we wanna make sure that we, as we move forward, make sure we have safe fencing all around this park to make sure that people are safe inside the park and nobody can wander into the roadways. And then when we look at uh, these orange dots, again, we have the orange triangles where they're showing us how you get into the park. And then when you get into the park, these orange dots are showing, these are the general ways that people walk through the park. Uh, then we have, you, we've noticed that inside this park, uh, which we love as designers, there is a lot of, um, you have a lot of slope. You have a lot of uh, levels. You have a lot of areas where you have to walk up or you have to walk down. And that's gonna be fun for us because we're hoping to work in opportunities um, to have little um, grassy hills where maybe kids can roll down or we can have slides. Um, but this was really looking at uh, the circulation and how people are right now using the park. Uh, one thing that I will say at this point, circulation will be very important as we move forward because one thing that we did note is, um, be, be touched on this, but there's a very important thing in our world right now called ADA, which is, uh, it's, it's, it's accessibility. So if we have friends who may have a harder time walking around, they're in a wheelchair, they're on crutches, or maybe if someone broke their ankle, we need to make sure that all of our friends can walk through this park easily without any trouble. And that was another reason this diagram was important because it helped us to understand that when we begin the design, we're gonna first figure out 
how we can have safe, easy walkways for everyone to enjoy, to access and enjoy the site. The next diagram, we started to look at the overall zones throughout your site. So we wanted to figure out how to communicate with you. What did we see as designers coming in and looking at this space? And we noticed that there were three primary, uh, three primary zones throughout your park. We of course have this open space, which admittedly when we first visited the park, uh, we were excited and surprised to see how big it was. This is a fantastic amenity for this community. Uh, oftentimes we're dealing with much smaller parks. So that was fantastic to see that we have a lot of space to work with. Uh, so open space will be very important because these, this will be the area where we wanna talk about what do you really see happening here? Do we want a basketball court? Do we want a spray park of some type? What types of play equipment do all of you kids like to play on, whether you're at school? Think about your favorite park that you like to go to on the weekend or with your family or in your friends. What do you love inside those parks? And at the end of this meeting, we would love to hear that from all of you. Uh, the two other zones that we noticed, um, in this area, there's a very extensive, there's an extensive playground area. And in one, on one side of the site, we have a play structure that accommodates children who are two to five years old. So for some of our younger guests. And then on the other side of the park, we have the play structure that accommodates the older children, the five to 12 year old kids. And that is important because when we're developing this park, we wanna make sure that we are attending to the needs of everyone in the community. Um, we're really hoping that this can be a multi-generational community. And by that, we mean a place where a family with uh, a toddler, a teenager, a parent and a grandparent can all go and enjoy. And then the last zone, were, um, which we thought was worth noting, were the park edges. And that is what you can see in this dashed blue line around the park. Uh, the park edges are really important, again, because as we, we approach the site, there was a very interesting feeling of, um, at first it was a feeling of, oh, are we allowed to go in? Because it felt like it was a little more private but then once we were in, it felt nestled and safe. And a lot of that had to do with the way the edges are arranged. So then we took the circulation and the site zone diagrams and we're, we're going down and we're getting, we're getting more into your site. Um, so I have a few more slides here. We're gonna go through more specific information of what we've observed. And then we're gonna get to those questions that we wanna ask you to open this up for discussion. So just hang in there with me, everybody. I'm almost done. And I'm still surprised to see how many kids are still with us. I'm so proud of you. Um, okay, so looking at your open space, um, I'm gonna just go around the park here. Um, you have some, as we've mentioned, you have these really beautiful trees and these are called deciduous trees. So a Christmas tree is called an evergreen tree and these trees are called deciduous trees and you have beautiful trees out there. Then we noticed you have this grass mound, again, that really gives this sense of, of feeling safe inside your park. Um, and then inside there's this open space. Right now it's asphalt. And within that asphalt is, um, there is a star design, which was, we were very curious about. And if anyone on this call has any understanding or knowledge of what that star was intended for, is it important to people? We would love to know because that was something we didn't really find in our research. So anyone who has information, we would love to hear that at the end of the meeting. Uh, moving through your park, um, the asphalt wraps around. The asphalt is not in great condition. We did notice there was puddling, um, which of course, when you have puddling days like today, you're gonna have ice. Um, and then you have these really gracious wide concrete stairs throughout. And the concrete stairs also are not in great condition, but it was nice to see that such consideration was given to accessibility, um, wide stairs so that people weren't feeling corralled down a, a teeny tiny stair. This, um, upon entering the park from Cornwall Street, this is where we have that, the William Flaherty plaque. There's a concrete wall. We go up a walkway here in this location is that granite tree stump that I had mentioned earlier. 
And then again, just some more of that uneven asphalt and we noticed a drinking fountain. Again, another element that we'd like to hear from people, do you like the drinking fountain? Would you like to have a water bottle filler? Would you like to have, um, does anyone out there have a puppy and they'd like to have their puppy drink from this fountain? So this is what we'd like to hear from all of you because I know my puppy likes to drink out of every fountain she possibly can, um, but we need to hear that from you. Uh, these are some of the photographs that we took while we were out there. Again, my guess is that all of you are pretty familiar with this because it's your park. Um, but we find that as we're moving forward with design, these photos become invaluable to us. This, this imagery together with your comments are gonna help really drive what this place can be. Looking at the playground, uh, we have in the two to five year old playground, which is in this location, uh, different types of play equipment. There are structures for climbing. We noted a teeter-totter and teeter-totters are good because they help with, with movement whereas uh, playground structures help with like climbing and strength. So we were happy to see that. Uh, and then of course you have some swings, which we find that swings, kids seem to love swings. They just love them and who doesn't? I think most adults I know love swings. That's about movement. So it's nice to see that you have a lot of, um, you have a lot of ways to go out and play. And then of course the open space that I talked about, you can just run like the Dickens and just get that energy out, which I'm sure your parents are happy when you do that. Um, then continuing to the five to 12 year old play structure. And then we had um, some older swings in this area. Again, really nice to see the range of activities, but we'd like to hear from you. What works and what would you maybe like to see um, in addition to what is out there? And then these are the photos. And then finally, um, talking about your edges and the canopies. The tree canopies are magnificent. Uh, we will be working with a licensed arborist on this project. Uh, she has already been on site with us uh, because of course as landscape architects and working with B in the parks department, as she mentioned, trees are one of our most valuable resources. Um, we do not take lightly the removal of trees in any way. However, working with an arborist, we will be sure to have an evaluation early on in the project to understand if there are any trees out there that might unfortunately be sick or may need to be removed right now so that they do not cause potential damage or harm anybody in the future. But we will be um, very forthcoming with that. Uh, we do not take the removal of trees lightly. And that will be important as we begin to develop the concept designs. In the next meeting, we will um, we'll start to understand if we have to remove trees to accommodate um, the types of play equipment and, and uses that you'd like to see out here, we will communicate that with you. Um, again, I had mentioned earlier the need for fencing, but we would like to hear from you. Do you like the fencing? Do you not like the fencing? And then understanding how we're again gonna work to, to navigate the, gray, the, the steep slopes that are out around the site. and then some of the photos. We did note um, the condition of the majority of the chain link fence, which is this fence out here. It's that funny wire fence that's all around the park. We call that chain link. Uh, some of that was not in very good condition. Um, that is something that we will likely revisit as well. So finally, yay, I am done talking and we wanna hear from you now. So I wanna thank you again, all of you for your patience. Thank you for working with us through this process. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna leave these questions up on the slide for a little bit. We're gonna open it up for the chat and everyone, um, you know, be chime in, Kelly and Kelly chime in with any, you know, anything you're thinking. And we're gonna be writing notes as fast as we can while you're talking so that we can really hear what you think and then again, it's, if you have the bandwidth and the interest, the survey that we have put out there is going to be so important. And please say anything you want. Just you know, love it, absolutely can't stand it, whatever you want. We look forward to hearing uh, your comments. So thank you very much. Okay, so thank you guys so much. That was a fantastic exploration of the park. And we're seeing a lot of hands raised, which is fantastic. And at this point, this is the part where we're all going to go into 
conversation and um, I wanna invite our Spanish speakers and interpreters back into this room. Um, so I'm gonna give them a second. And um, all right, so I think- ahora, oh. Are you good, Miguel? Yeah, I'm good, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, all right, so these are just a couple of questions that are prompts. You don't have to answer them if you have other ideas, um, but we're curious to hear. Okay, lots of questions. So I think um, Mira, Mira Anello, Anello uh, you raised your hand first. I definitely saw that. So um, I think Shauna, can she unmute herself at this point? Which one? Um, Myra, Mira, Anello. I think you're good. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Mira. I care about Flaherty Park because I've been going there since I was like one years old. Um, I would like to keep the like rock bench thing um, because I see lots of ladybugs living on it and um, I see lots of people love it. Um, so yeah, thank you. Awesome. That's great to hear. An artist did that, as you know, so I'm sure that would warm her heart as well. That's great to hear. Um, so I think... Shauna, do you want to unmute people and just say their names as you as you allow them to to unmute? We'll do. Okay, so I'm lowering Zach. I can't say the last name. Dick Clerk. Hand. He has something to say. Hi. Go ahead, Zach. Thank you. Um, uh, so th this is Skylar, and the one here in the background is Zoe. We we live two blocks away and and um, are at the park at least three times a week minimum. Um, and uh, we one thing that you know the summers in Boston are getting hotter and 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 the the heat waves are getting longer. And I and I know that there's a, a splash park not too far away at uh, at Green Street, but on those really hot days and so many of us um, in the housing stock in this neighborhood don't have access to modern heating and cooling. So Mom, access moving. or yards. So access to um, uh, a spray park or something like that to add to this, um, to add to this park would be, I, I think a wish list uh, to help kids get out of the heat. Um, and another thing that I think we really lack um, on the side of the neighborhood is public bathrooms. I think there's a dearth of public bathrooms in Boston in general in our public parks. I think the, the only public park really in JP that has one is over by the pond. We don't really have one on our side of Franklin Park. We don't have one on the Southwest Corridor. So I'd love, I don't know, engineering wise, if it's possible or feasible, but I'd love for this park to be considered for a public bathroom for the playground. What? It helps what? kids, what? you know, stay out longer. It helps, you know, um, adults with kids stay out longer and enjoy the day more. Um, and it's just kind of a nice, uh, public health and public service to have um, instead of having to 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 cut things short or go home. Um, and we talked about birthday parties and things like that. It makes those sorts of things more possible. Um, so, uh, Skylar, do you have anything to say about the playground? We're at thumbs up. So, <laughs> not too worried about that part of it. I will say that we've been inspired by the Parkman playground, which is really cool and it has some nice musical elements, which is up in Forest Hills and recently redone one that we don't get to very often but um banana. more banana that's so uh we'll give someone else a chance but those are the things that we'd like to at least see considered thanks that's super helpful thank you zach thank you um i'm just from from the parks department perspective um be really loud about that okay because that is a that is a heavy lift from a maintenance perspective. And there are conversations that are happening right now, um, sort of saying like, well, maybe we should be a little bit more flexible in that regard and provide bathrooms. But, you know, it's like, they cost a lot of money and they take a lot of maintenance. 
And so if you want one, um, send me tons of emails, be really obnoxious, you know, so that I can go to the powers of me and say, these people are very clear about wanting one. Um, so that's a great thing to bring up, Zach. I totally appreciate that. Um, okay. So the next person is Ryan Fleischer. Forgive me if I, if I mispronounce your last name. No, you got it perfect, actually. So that was, that was surprising and welcome. Um, I live on Cornwall Street, um, and I have two kids. We use the playground quite frequently. Um, I'll be very quick because I see there's a lot of hands. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention, and I, would, I don't know if this is the park's responsibility, but um, as I sit and watch people enter in the Cornwall Street side, there, I see a tremendous amount of kids and also people that cut through the playground cutting across the street and there's no crosswalk. And a lot of people drive very fast on Cornwall. I don't know if that's part of the, if to like actually get crosswalks on every single park entrance, but that would be tremendously helpful um, for getting people you know, across the street into the park. Um, and the second thing is that as I sit and I watch a lot of people at the park, there's a lot of neighbors with dogs and a lot of people have their dogs off leash, which I'm totally cool with, but, um, you know, it would be great to see, or, and I hear other neighbors' ideas around having like some a space for dogs to run off leash, some runs. I don't know what's available. I know like around the edges, like the, there's a lot of like broken glass and trash that's usually around the perimeter of the park. I never send my kids down there because it's like often kind of dangerous and it often is pretty unused, but I see a lot of people with their dogs, the dogs run in that space. So like, I don't know if some of that unused space could be, you know, for dogs or thought through for people or neighbors with dogs or if other neighbors want to chime in. Um, who use that, um, but uh, I figured I'd just throw that out there. So, but yeah, thanks for putting this together and I look forward to, to these changes. Thank you, Ryan. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I just also wanna speak to dog, dog runs and dog parks. If there is a, a desire within the community um, for something like that, what parks really likes to do and what we need to do is work with a, a, an organized group who says we really want a dog park and we are there to really help maintain it. Because um, we get a lot of requests who, from people who say, we want a dog park because we don't want the dogs running around our lawn or something like that. But those aren't people who are gonna be like responsible for making sure that things get picked up and that they're little baggies. So um, if there is a need for that, a desire for a dog park, um, definitely let me know who, who would like to help maintain that because that is, is something that would make the difference between having it happen and having it not happen. Um, so that, that's great to hear that, that you would think it's, it's a good idea, Ryan. So maybe that will spur some other people to, to, to communicate their interests and in helping support that. Um, okay. I'm just, I want to okay. bring a brief, brief second here for the, um, the chat. There's a lot of action here in the chat and it's a lot of really great people are saying sort of like, yes, yes, plus, plus, you know, lots of public restroom support, which is great. Um, I also wanna just point out the Karen says, she's a homeowner adjacent to the park on Ackley and she loves the trees. It would be a shame if they were taken down. The fence can be redone for the entire perimeter. Um, she's not into bathrooms. She, I'm meaning like she, she opposes public bathrooms and a splash park. So, okay, we've heard you. That sounds, that sounds interesting. We, again, are not, we're, we're looking to leave as many trees as possible on site. So um, we would not be looking to take down trees on, on Ackley. Um, Patricia supports a dog run area, um, which is great to know. Ralph says that there appears to be a right of way going up from Brookside Ave on the outside of the fence along the play structure. Is it actually a public way or a private property? Um, on the outside of the fence along the play structures. Um, Ralph, if you email me, I can look into that. I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, and Renee says there is a group that's hoping to, hoping to organize a dog park in or around the Southwest Corridor. That is great to know. Um, and perhaps if there is a dog park that is nearby, um, oh, that's the no man's land. Okay. Um, and our translator says, see, I would not. Un, si hay alguna persona que le gustaría dar un comentario, siéntese libre de hacerlo. And you yeah. can translate. Yeah, if there is some, uh, yeah, that's in Spanish. I'm saying that if there is someone uh, that needs um, 
to give a comment or a question, feel free to do it. Um, yeah. Si hay alguna persona que le gustaría dar un comentario, siéntase libre de hacerlo. Uh, you read it very well, by the way, B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lots of raised hands, so we'll let people keep talking. Sorry to interrupt there with, with the chat, but I just, uh, there's, there's lots of action there. So this is a multifaceted meeting. <laughs> okay, so the next person I see in the queue is Zainab. Again, please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. I'm lowering your hand now. Go ahead, Zainab. Hey, so um, actually my name is CG um, and I go to neighborhood school in JP, which is really close to Flattery, Flattery Playground. Um, we use it for like recess and sometimes we use it for like learning. Um, and I like, I like all the trees. Um, I like the benches. Uh, and yeah, so some things I'd like to add, maybe like some type of water play because like a lot of people want to get some water play that I talked to in my school and it's, it's like a lot, just a lot of people want that. And also maybe like get tables or something and chairs because I see that in Rainbow Park and, and it's, it's really helpful. And yeah, and also, Maybe we could get like some Wi-Fi because some people might want to do like homework there, but they can't connect to like any Wi-Fi. So yeah, those are my opinions. Oh, CG, thank you. That was so well done. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Okay. And the next person will be Joanna Khalil. Over in hand. Go ahead, Joanna. And Oliver, I think she said Joanna Khalil is Oliver. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Oliver. <laughs> Oliver? Um, Oliver is saying they can't unmute. Hold on, I'm trying to, okay. I just pressed it now, there you go. Um, I go to the neighborhood school, JP. Uh, like CG said, we have recess there uh, a lot at Flaherty Playground. Um, uh, I, 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 I think you got, I think you should keep the brick, um, star the eight sided brick star um lots of people use it and i th also think um uh you should at like people are so i've seen people use the younger kids structure more than the older kids structure um not because of age. I think with the older kids structure, you should pro maybe like add another level or something. Make it a little more challenging maybe. Um, I just want a brief shout out to um, Oliver and CG. You guys have really good backgrounds going. I'm like, ooh, I wanna be in that beach scene that Oliver has going in the background. <laughs> um, I also just want to ask if the design team could flick to, I think the last slide, um, we have our survey that if um, there's still quite a few people in this meeting, if you have to go for any reason understood, um, this is a QR code to do our survey. And this is my contact information and the project page information. So I want to keep talking. We still have plenty of time. Um, but if anybody needs to leave for any reason, I want you to take this information with you, right? Um, so 
let's let's go back to uh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is getting a lot of support, so that's great to see in the chat. Um, lots of people are into that, so I think that is something that we can certainly try and arrange. Um, I will start looking into that, so that's great to hear. Let's go back to more people, more people sharing their ideas. Okay, so the next one in the queue is Danielle Schulman. Hi, we have multiple people who would like to talk. I'm going to let my seven-year-old talk first. I think you should keep the big area, the big black top, and um, add like um, a zip line, but not like the kind of zip line that most playgrounds have, like a kind, the kind of zip line that that the Jackson Square playground has. And um, remove the wood chips and put in something else that would look better. Like, like um, what would look better? Well, there's lots of things that could work better. I'm sure the design team could figure it out. The wood chips have um, are a problem for like the small children because they eat them or they throw them. And then they also can hide glass and things like that. So, um, I mean, that's not a big ask on my part. Uh, if it happens along the way, that's awesome. But that's that's not like one of my big ones. But yes, what's yeah. your, is there something else you want to say? Um, who's that? All right, my eleven-year-old like to talk to. Um, so I also want to keep the blacktop area because it's really good for like playing soccer or baseball, and I want to keep like the use of scooters. Or roller skates. I like the idea of the spray park, but I don't think um I don't want like a really big one, like a little one, like off to the side might be better. Something like El Parcasito over in Franklin Park. Yeah, that. Something small like El, El Parcasito over in Franklin Park or Rainbow Playground, whatever you want to call it. Anything else? Yeah, and I also really think the um so, um the crosswalk is a good idea because um it's kind of really unsafe for kids to cross there without a crosswalk and there's a lot of neighborhood kids who like just be walking there by themselves without like grown ups or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the entrance that's right off of Cornwall coming off of Marmion Street. There could really be a crosswalk there. That would be extremely helpful. Um, let's see, some thoughts that I had on top of what the kids have said, thank you children, because uh, they've been really thinking about this since we heard about this meeting a month ago, um, is that, yes, there are a lot of excellent trees that we would like to see saved. That said, the playground structures themselves have never had enough shade. And then several years back, like five years back when that giant storm happened, several big trees came down. So now we have even less shade over the playground structures. So actually I'd be in favor of adding more trees or more shade that on the playground structure themselves, just because in summer, sometimes the equipment gets super hot to the point where you can't use it. Um, yeah, like I, like I hate to go on the swings um, in the summer because the swings are super hot, but it's annoying because I love the swings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the next thing I was going to say. She wanted to say about the swings. One great thing, a couple great things about this playground is the number of swings. There are three regular big kid swings, one accessible swing and two baby swings, which is wonderful because at most of the parks in the, in the area, there are not enough swings. And I would love to see like that number kept because there really is enough for everybody. And if you're gonna do anything to the swings, add more. <laughs> I don't think we need more, but yeah. I think, but not cut down what's there. Um, and but yes, the, 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 the seesaw that you mentioned is excellent because there's not one anywhere around. Um, and um, one thing, the way kids like to use this playground is all those big uh, paths that go everywhere, they're generally like a race track or an obstacle course or for their scooters, or they really like that there's all of this path that they can work on. So if there's some way to keep that path element. That said, the accessibility is a pain because the only way to get in in an accessible way is that is that entrance at Cornwall. So if you're coming from any other direction, unless you're going to go through the parking lot of the, you know, um, 
health of the health center, there's really no accessible way to get into the park other than that. So if some of the other entrances could be more accessible, or if there's a way to open up other entrances, maybe. Um, and I think those are uh, my major ones. Uh, bigger climbing structures that people have mentioned, if that's possible, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, and oh yes, Ladybug Rock. We call it Ladybug Rock. Someone mentioned Ladybugs. They love Ladybug Rock and would definitely like to keep it. Um, and uh, yeah, and they like King Rock as well, which is the other rock um, all the way across from Ladybug Rock, but basically, yeah. But thank you. We were very surprised to hear this place was getting renovated because we've always thought it's a kind of a perfect space as is. So I'm excited to see what you can do with it while keeping its wonderful character that is already there. That is great to hear. Thank you guys so much. That's some, some great feedback and some great direction. Okay, well, the next one is Joaquin Lepra Le Wyman. Again, forgive my mispronunciation. Um, my name is Joaquin, and I like how it is, but I do agree that, um, I do agree that I do want, I do like a second, um, a second floor. For the place structure? Yeah. Something more challenging? The, yeah. Um, but, and no wood chips. I do not like the wood chips. Um, uh, slide with a tunnel. Yeah, the slide with a with a, like a tunnel, but you need to actually climb up to actually go down. Um, yeah, the crosswalk, the crosswalk. Oh, and where the um, what is it called? The, not the wood chip part, the, the asphalt. yeah, the asphalt part, like not make it into asphalt, but kind of like into grass. What do you use it for? What do you do? Sports in a lot. Yeah, but what kind of sports do you play on that, on that big soccer. open space? You like to play soccer. Yeah. Okay. okay. What else? Oh, and the swings. What about the swings? I want them there. Why? Why do you want them there? I don't actually want them there, but my sister does. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's the last thing you wrote out? Well, um, yeah, I do want the trees there. Why do you like the trees there? I am not telling that. I'm leading the witness here. You say it, you say it. <laughs> all, the, all the things that you shared. We love this park. It is down the street from our house. Um, we use it a ton and we actually find that it's a hidden gem in our community, um, but we would like to see, I think, more folks take advantage of it because it's a wide open space. Um, I think the pieces that I would add to the great ideas that have been shared, especially by the young, um, young people, is the fencing around the park is actually really helpful because as Joaquin was mentioning, he loves to play soccer or you know throw a play catch and the ball inevitably always goes to the edge and because of how traffic happens in our wonderful city um, it is incredibly helpful to have the fence uh, or fences around um, the park the other piece that i will say is um having the big open space as a gathering space, um, like where people can come and perform. In the summers, there are neighbors who are musically inclined and they come and they just play music. Uh, and, you know, and, and we also have folks who do dancing. Um, we have, we had folks who were doing like gymnastics in the park. And so just making sure that there is wide open space still available. Um, where folks can gather and bring like their artistic abilities like, is something that I know we really enjoy. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity to engage. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Those are some great tips. Um, that's actually really good to know that like there, there are performances that happen, you know, when we design large open spaces, um, you know, it's, it makes a difference if they're going to be used for soccer or if they're going to be used for like, performances or you know and, it, and it's nice to sometimes design things that work for both um but it, it's always helpful to know ahead of time if that's if that's the idea so 
um, definitely sounds like it's a, a well-used site by um, both grown-ups and kids. So still got some more hands up. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, next in line is Alex Alvinos. Go right ahead. Hi, thank you for hosting such a great meeting and for all the history of the park. Um, and wonderful to hear so many folks commenting on it. Um, uh, my wife and I live just around the corner and we love that there's so much green space in JP and parks. Um, I think one of the things, or a couple of things that we really care about are the ecological aspects of this. Our, our particular, we live right by the church community center and there's a lot of asphalt in our neighborhood. And uh, like the front of our house is that it's sometimes 10 or 15 degrees warmer in the summer than the back of our house, which has shaded by trees. So there's definitely like little heat islands here. Um, and just a lot of, a lot more asphalt because of some of the industrial aspects like you showed in the blue area. And so I think it'd be really wonderful to consider having even more trees and even edible things planted like sort of in the food forest permaculture vein of things um, uh, like pawpaw trees, American persimmons, uh, walnuts, chestnuts, different things that could really come in over time and help feed the community in addition to providing shade. And then if it's done ecologically, it could also bring, you know, make habitat for the songbirds and the good insects, the butterflies, the different things that could live in our neighborhood, um, just sort of to be building healthier ecosystems into where we live. Um, it's nice, definitely nice to see the mature trees in the space, but sort of adding the understory would be really, really wonderful. Um, and sort of having it feel like when you enter the park, it's you're sort of entering a more natural space in addition to having the space for all the recreational activities for children and adults. Um, so yeah, so food forest sort of elements um, for ecological and, and human food reasons would be really wonderful um, uh, and for, for nature. And then also definitely uh, check mark on the, the performance aspect. Obviously we're a very, you know, JP's got a lot of arts history here uh, musical history, there's JP Porch Fest is one of the big events of the year. And a lot of the park spaces for performers, myself included, and a lot of other performers, just there's, we struggle to find spaces where you can actually like have a, a decent venue for people to sit outside in the summer and, and you know, play for your friends or sit around. Um, and so if there were aspects of it that just would make it a little bit easier for artists to be able to use the space, that'd be wonderful too. Okay, those are great suggestions. And I gotta say your um, edible trees, I mean, I know it's every, that's gotten the most support. I think everybody has responded on the chat like, yay. So that's, that's a fantastic suggestion and um, we'd, love to, we'd love to develop that idea. So um, let's, let's have some more hands. Okay, next in the queue is Seth Kroll. Go right ahead. I like the park. I would like um, the blacktop area, the bee grass and like trees that, and stuff that you can eat as well. Um, I want to keep the wood chips. Um, I want more trees and I kind of want kind of tunnels and openings for tunnels under the ground because that would be cool. Okay, it, in different rooms, like in it, like a, um, like somewhere where you could eat or stuff like that. In, in addition to the, the underground tunnels and, and rooms where you can eat, we were also thinking that uh, picnic tables and maybe a grill above ground would be nice. Um, places to- And underground. And underground, and maybe some uh, bike, bike parking. Um, and I also <laughs> like the idea of water fountains, bottle filling stations, dog uh, drinking uh, stations would be great. Um, and then for the play space, we would really love like a natural play space. Um, the playground in the uh, Cambridge Common is one of our favorites. So something like that would be really wonderful. Um, and then in addition to the comments about the crosswalks on 
uh, Cornwall Street. Uh, I, uh, we go to the playground maybe a, every day, a couple times every day, because we also have, have dogs. Um, and rarely do cars fully come to a stop at the intersection of Cornwall and Brookside. Uh, drivers just sort of blow through that, those stop signs. So I wonder if, if there's a possibility for having a raised crosswalk at that intersection that would make the park uh, feel more accessible um, when crossing the street. Um, and in terms of the dog features, I would not like a fenced in dog run area. I think um, uh, having it just sort of the way it is now where uh, dog, dog owners can bring their dogs on a leash would be great to maintain. Thank you. Okay, um, I thank you very much for, for all those comments. Those are very helpful, especially your son's comments, you know, while we might not be able to provide something underground, it totally helps us frame sort of what kind of play equipment to look at, you know, like there, there's some great suggestions there. Um, about the crosswalk, I, um, the parks project technically, you know, we have our property line and we're supposed to sort of stick within that, but this is great to hear at this meeting because I can absolutely reach out to Boston Transit Department and ask if they have either the ability to direct any funding towards this that we could address in our project um, and add something like that, like a speed table or a speed bump. Um, you know, if they have to do a study to do that kind of thing, you know, basically to put it on their radar um, because formally, you know, we sort of stick within the park boundaries, um, but we are all like city of Boston. So I can absolutely reach out and try and get the ball rolling on that. It's really good to hear from you guys about that need. So thank you. A um, couple more hands. Let's let's hear more more hands, please. Okay. Next is Mandala Sindelar. Go ahead. Okay. So my name is Mandala Sindelar, and I'm from Neighborhood School. I think there should be more swings because when our class goes to um, goes to uh, Cornwall Clarity Park. There, everyone rushes for the swings and tries to get one first, and then everyone's waiting for one. There's a line, so I think there should be some more swings. I think that we should also maybe get like a like fill up more of the space. Like we could add. A, I like. I agree with um. Danielle's family like to ha add a zip line like the one in um, uh, Jackson, Square. Jackson Square and I also think like maybe a, a bigger structure uh, because like there's it's like not it's it's not as like like at Parkman Playground, there's a nice and big structure, like something a little bit bigger. Um, I also think like a, a big swing, like the one at Parkman, I don't really know what that's called. You can say it's a round one. It's right? like the round, it's like a round one, it has some holes in it and it's good for like many ages. You can use it in many seasons, like most of the things I'm saying. It's really fun and it can fit multiple people. And I think a bunch of people would have fun on it. And I also think that the um, the plaza, like the star on the eight sided star, I think that should be kept there and shouldn't really change it. Maybe just make it a little bit more smooth so people could learn how to like rollerblade or or like bike or scooter. It's also good for playing sports. Like on that picture, that's um, people from the neighborhood school. Um, like you, and the, I think there should be more benches and picnic tables because that would be very helpful. And thank you. I, I actually have something okay. to say too. Um, First of all, thank you. And it was also, I really appreciated getting to hear the history. Um, and I love so many of the ideas. Um, I'm just gonna ditto with Seth and the Cambridge Commons. I really love the, um, I don't know the name of that playground, but it has the, the wooden uh, sculpted like pirate ship or something. Um, 
anyways i just i feel like jp is such a unique and artistic community and i'd love to see that um that reflected in this playground perhaps um yeah so i you know um, i'm an artist and i i've been having fun throughout the meeting just doing some sketches of some ideas i don't know if I, if you can see actually where's our um where are we on here <laughs> I don't know if you can see it might be is it no. blurry yeah I, I, it's, it's blurring it's blurring but if you take a take a photo of that and and uh, email I, it to I me can, i can fix it i just have to do <laughs> you've got your it on it nice i don't know what the heck's going on there anyways i thought for the fencing you know you can make things where it's like um looks like colored pencils and it's just more colorful and i know somewhere i think it's in europe they have a like in the toddler playground there's a banana slide and a watermelon like tunnels and a kind of boat with a apple and little seesaw that's a lemon or or like mirrored eggs that you can interact with um, the tunnel underground I mean there's so many creative ideas obviously um, something else that I was thinking about is the other senses um, I don't feel like that's always engaged like light and reflection um, so, you know, you can have things like with plexiglass with flowers so the kids could interact with light or if you had some of if you had to cut down a tree and you had some. Um, you could keep the tree there and cut it up and have you know it painted in circles and have it be turned into seating area so anyway. Um, all sorts of ideas I had making a book bench there's just I, I would love to see it more um, of the artistic brought in if possible. Um, I have another thing to say. The picture with people on the swings, well, most of the people there are from neighborhood school. And also, I agree with a bunch of the people who said there should be more trees because I don't, in the summer, it's not shady enough, but then it also is good for climbing. Um, I don't know how many people here like climbing, but I really like enjoy climbing trees and sitting under them or just seeing how green, uh, like, I also like the cherry trees, like there are cherry trees there that make really nice flowers in the spring. And yeah. All right, those are some wonderful ideas. I love those illustrations. I'm serious, actually, if you wanna take those, take photos of those and email them to me just because um, it's always great to have these types of things. You know, we have, just so everybody knows that the recording of this meeting goes, is documented and the chat is as well well so if people are writing their ideas there but you know we're not going to catch those those images of, of what you just showed and I think they're beautiful so um I would I would love it if you could send those to me um and we got some more hands here let's keep moving because we are um we're, we're good here for time still so so no rush but I just want to make sure everybody gets to say their piece okay and next in the queue is Jacob Bohr Go ahead. So this is Caleb. Um, hello, my name is Caleb. Um, I go to school in, um, at the neighborhood school. Um, and um, I've been seeing a lot of dogs. And I've also been thinking um, about um, uh, about how much birds there are too. So I think there should be a uh, a bird bath and a dog park. And and uh, also more benches. Thank you. <laughs> Those are some great ideas. Thank you, Caleb. Those are awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, next is Renee Holden. Caught me off guard there. Hi. Um, so we live right next door to the park. We are along that fence that I think uh, somebody mentioned before. 
Um, and so we look forward to a conversation about, you know, that, that sort of no man's land there. Um, but in the meantime, I love all the ideas that have been brought forward today. I wanted to add my voice in support of, you know, more kind of performance space. So keeping that big space, I think someone in the chat mentioned the, um, the dance parties there were that happened, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, last fall, end of last summer. Those were terrific and we need more of those. Um, I've noticed that uh, in terms of picnic benches, um, seating, uh, extra seating, they've added a lot in the Green Street playground recently and they really um, are well used. So like plus five on that um, for, the, uh, for the park. I also wondered a little, well, two things. One is, um, in the areas that kind of slope down into the park, I'm not sure. I, I mean, my kids used to um, sled down those, you know, when we had snow back then. Um, but um, I just wonder whether um, those are well used enough uh, to warrant like some other use. So could there be, you know, seating kind of built in almost amphitheater style um, for people who are attending performances in the bigger space? I, I don't know if that, you know, would take away something from the park because certainly people could bring chairs, but I think it would be an interesting idea. Um, I also didn't catch really when Jade was talking earlier about the slope down, um, that sort of like waste, almost wasted space. Um, uh, down from the, um, well, I'm looking at it right here, from the side along Brookside and then the side along Cornwall that goes down and that somebody said like dogs walk there. I just didn't know if that could be like graded up in some way to provide a little more space mm -hmm. for, for use. I, I get that it catches balls and, and there may be a safety element too, but I just wondered if we could get more space into the park um, and, and add some of the additional elements that people talked about here. Um, and lastly, no, two, two things. One is um, the absolutely on the water fountain. That water fountain hasn't worked in, I don't know how many years. We've been here for a long time. I don't remember the last time it actually provided water. Um, but um, having one that was is both, you know, bottle filler as well as a dog, uh, bowl filler at the bottom would be terrific. And then my son, who's 18, who says he, he's climbed every, um, uh, in his years here, has climbed every single tree in that park, um, uh, is an advocate for like some sort of climbing net. I think that there's something extensive over by the um, Jackson Square T. I don't know if we would be able to do something that extensive, but some sort of climbing net might be um, uh, a, a good idea for those kids that love to climb. Thanks. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Renee. Okay. All right. Next Let's person. Have hands. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the next person is Maeve Sly. Um, one of my ideas was for the like kind of open space, the plaza, we could add soccer goals because I know a lot of people play soccer and like we have to use like in between the benches and the rock out there and like someone's hat. And so I feel like soccer, um, soccer goals would be really helpful. And my other idea was to add like a garden, like maybe a little raised bed. So, um, cause those are really fun to take care of and they're also like a nice little nature spot. Thank you. That's okay. great. Thank you, Maeve. Okay, next is Alice Brooks. Okay, um, my name is Gabe and just using um, Alice's well, Alice's mom's computer. Um, but um, I would really want to keep, I like want to keep the plaza a lot because it's really fun to play on. We play soccer on it. And like, that's the class above us in that picture right there. Um, and um, 
like today at recess, we went there, we played kickball and, and the star is also really helpful for like bases. Like we use it for bases, like kind of um, like some of the points, but, and I also want to, I kind of want to add, um, I, I kind of want to, like, I want to add um, um, more swings because, like, everybody's, like, always, like, running to get on them. Like, when we get in, everybody's, like, sprinting to get on them. And, like, a lot of people said that. Um, and, like, also, like, there's, like, one ramp. And I feel like there should be another ramp because, like, like, cause that ramp, well, yeah, cause that ramp gets to the health center or like Brookside, I think I forget what street it was, but, and like, like there's a lot of staircases, but like not that many ramps. So I think it would also help for that. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much. Those are great suggestions. Okay, and last but not least is Jenny Zhao. Hello, my name is Jenny. I go to neighborhood school and we go to Flaherty Park three times a week for recess. I would like to keep the rock bench because a lot of ladybugs live on it. And if we remove it, they will have nowhere to go. I would also like to keep the trees because they provide shade and they also provide oxygen. I would like to add a sprinkler because that's like on high demand for a lot of people. And in like the summer when it's like really hot, like there's like not a lot of places to cool off. So like adding a sprinkler will like help. And thank you for listening. That is great. Thank you so much, Jenny. That's, um, it's something where um, the Parks Department is aware of climate change and urban heat island effect. And it, it really is something that um, I think there, there have been a couple of voices tonight that are maybe opposed to the spray feature. Um, but it is something that we are really looking to, to provide for communities that that want it. And I think, I think most do want it because people are using our parks more often. It is getting hotter and it makes a really big difference, the ability to cool down. Um, so that is something that, that I think we can anticipate adding to this park. I think a spray feature um, is, is a great idea. And I've, I've heard a lot of people in support of it tonight. So um, just want to say that those are great suggestions and, and thank you for, for letting us know. Um, there are a couple of notes in the chat here um, that people are contributing. I, I also just want to say um, from a project management perspective, sorry to talk about me here because I know it's not about me, but um, this community is great. And I started reaching out to people and people talked to other people and it was like the outreach for this meeting kind of like did itself. Um, and there are so many people that are here tonight. There's so many kids here tonight we have a really hard time generally like trying to hear back from the people who use the playgrounds, you know, and a lot of the time that's kids. Um, but we've heard such a great variety of input from, you know, people who want more artistic um, style to the, to the feel of the park and people who can talk about, you know, how the artistic community and, and the music that has happened there um, and, you know, the, the nature, the natural aspects of the park. Um, so I'm really, it's a thrill as a project manager to be participating in this project with you guys. So I just wanna thank everyone who has come here tonight and shared your ideas and, you know, huge props to you guys. So um, I really wanna thank you. And people are, are still writing things in the chat. I just wanted to note that um, someone, Erica, I think told me that if you go to the parks project page, the survey link button is not live yet. And we updated that today, but it hasn't, occurred yet. So if you want to take the survey, um, either check in tomorrow with our project page, or you can do go directly there with the QR code that's on the screen right now. Um, I will have everybody's email 
from this meeting. Um, and I will be following up with you um, next week saying, you know, thank you so much, da, 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 here's the survey link, you know, so you will, you will get it in your inbox if you don't have the time or the, the ability to do a QR code right now. So don't stress about it, but um, please share, share with your neighbors and friends that this is, this is out there. We're looking for feedback. We're looking for direction. Um, and, you know, this is, this has just been an, a wonderful meeting. I just wanted to thank everybody. And uh, I guess we, it is, it's 725. So we're, we're five minutes ahead of our 730 idea. Um, so please be in touch. Let me know if you have any questions. You've got my email address here on the slide. Um, Abigail.chatfield at boston.gov. Go check out our project page. And um, thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. Thank you.